Hi guys, uh, welcome back to Elegata TV and the radio YouTube channel. It's been a while. Uh, I've not been on the channel and it's because I've been pursuing a lot of things. Uh, I've been tasked with the responsibility to work uh, in the, you know, to be behind the scene, work in the production of league matches for the MPFL. So we'll put things together and try to get the paperwork properly, duly signed and uh, also hoping that the organizers of the league would get their their contract or their alignment with the TV, the broadcasters, while on our end we're pushing for the matches to be streamed on YouTube, Facebook and every digital platform, OTT platform that is possible. Uh, but you know, my name is Edafi Machia Segan and you love to come with the on our spot. Somebody sent me a question and he said I should uh, analyze and post on my YouTube channel, so that's why I'm doing it. And this is the question. Hi, Mr. Idafi. Uh, what is the difference between Pep Guardiola's tactics and Manchester City this season uh, compared to the previous two seasons? Could it be that Man City are not playing well because Liverpool, younger clubs, Liverpool are not chasing them like they used to, and that has made them drop the ball a bit? Or could it be that the signing of Haaland, Haaland, who happened to be a player who scores a lot of goals, but Pep Guardiola actually love to play with his first night as we've seen from his days at Barcelona up until now. Could that be the reason why that the team is struggling and not doing well? At this rate, they might not even win the much converted Champions League trophy. Unfortunately for City and their fans, Pep Guardiola have signed an extension, meaning that they might go uh, an entire season on beating like Pep Guardiola's, uh, on, sorry, an entire season without a trophy like Pep Guardiola's first season in England. Okay, did he, did he, did he not win anything his first season? Okay. I can't remember now. All right, uh, that's from uh, Joel, all the way from the Maldives. Thank you very much, Joel, for sending me that message. I'm going to try my best to respond the best way that I know. I'm also taken by massive surprise. I wouldn't lie to you. I wouldn't sit here and tell you, stand here and tell you that I know uh, everything that is going on. I don't. So uh, basically, this is what I'm going to say. Now, Pep Guardiola started the season pretty well. Man City started the season pretty well and from the get-go I've said even before the season started that it is Man City's title to lose and the biggest contender for this title oh, uh, uh, would be Manchester United. And even when Manchester United were not playing well, I said this, Manchester United have got the best team in the Premier League. The only problem is that they have an Abinja in their team called Cristiano Ronaldo. If they can get rid of Cristiano Ronaldo as fast as possible, that team will become one of the best team in the Premier League. And we're seeing that. And looking at the game that they played today, I mean, Manchester United, Manchester United have gone from a team that lost to Man City 6 3 to a team uh, that, you know, were able to come back from conceding a goal and win two goals to one. It's not the first time, anyway, since uh, David Moyes, there is not a coach that have sat on the Manchester United dugout that have lost back to back Manchester Derby. Uh, it's only David Moyes since Alex Ferguson left that have lost back to his, their first, his first two. Manchester's derby. So I'm not really surprised that Manchester United won. I was talking to my friend earlier today that I, I think that Manchester United will win this game, but you know, it is City and it is hard to pick City as a losing side in uh, football, no matter how good your analysis are. So uh, I, I settled down for that, but as I'm settling down, I'm also thinking, you know what? Let's not go and say things and then the result doesn't go the way you say it. But I just kept it cool like that. And I had to turn that out because of the TV behind my back. I don't want anybody to see I'm putting uh, their content on my channel. I just didn't notice an earlier on. So, uh, strategically, I think Pep Guardiola's the problem with Man City is letting Zinchenko and Gabriel Jesus go wasn't a bad thing. And bringing in Haaland also wasn't a bad thing. But Man City team is an engine that is built when like you engage a four-wheel drive in a car all wheels will be engaged at the same time and they will pull simultaneously together okay man city team is not that kind of a team where one player's excellence would uh you know outweigh the other even the pep Guardiola's barcelona team people said it was about Messi, but it really wasn't about Messi as much as it is about xavi iniesta there's the receiver no david vias Oh, Danny Alves, sorry. Danny Alves uh, and every other person who, Sergio Busquets, and every other person who contributed to the first. But the outstanding and the standard player obviously was Lionel Messi. 
Man City's team too is also like that. When they've won the title, sometimes Ruben Diaz have stood out. Sometimes it is Kevin De Bruyne. Another time is uh, David Siva before he became Bernardo Siva and all that. Now, if you look at this current team, some things are missing. Some key elements are missing. One of the elements is missing is that Bernardo Silva is not happy. And like they say, the Bernardo Silva, when he's happy, his feet is also happy. I'm coining that word from Peter when there. The happy feet is not there. That twinkle to uh, moving, you know, quick movement, being in, in, in the right place at the right time, uh, you know, playing like the sun. They never see me coming. It's always what makes Man City special. But that is not there. Ike Gondoga does not know if he plays well in one game, if he's going to start the next game. Mares is also beginning to look like the Mares in his last season at Leicester. Uh, it's neither here nor there. There's a bit of absent-mindedness. And Joao Cancelo of this season is not the Joao Cancelo of last season. I can understand the injuries and all that. I really don't know. Somehow, now nah, this is my theory. This is not, this is not fact. You know that uh, Mendy, Mendy the, the defender, have been found not guilty in all of the rape charges against him. I'm thinking some of the players are looking like probably the club didn't defend him or protect him properly. Now he's not guilty. Could it be the lot with us or not? I don't know if that is. That's just me playing the conspiracy theory. It doesn't really matter in this equation. But I think but because players like Gondogan, Bernardo Silva, Joao Cancelo are not playing well. And the defense, let's be very honest, the worst a uh, pair of defense since Pep Guardiola came to Manchester City is the one they are having consistently. The Nathan Ake and um, Kanji. Because they are the same kind of player. They are stiff, they are not flexible, they are not fluid like the others. And uh, Rodri this season is not really playing well. One of the things that I've said about football is when your position does not have a competition, it's always hard to lift your game because you don't know what you're lifting your game for. You're lifting your, why are you lifting your game? Because there's nobody to take your place. And then Phil Foden have not been on the side consistently. Jack Grealish, even though he scored today, have also kind of like not really brought that kind of value that is needed with a Pep Guardiola or a Man City team. So all of those put together have dragged the team back in some cases. Does that mean that they've not given us great football this season? They obviously have given us some great football, amazing, scintillating, marvelous football. But you see, uh, so many factors are working against today's man. This season's Man City. Go back and check uh, Pep Guardiola's history in the Premier League. His season always takes off in November. That voodoo, that magic that happens in November, that Eureka moment that they discover in November was disrupted this season. So their universe and their galaxy did not align because when it aligns is November. It takes off in November and they go that 18, 13, 21 games on beating where they shatter everybody across all competition. This season is different because the World Cup came in Santa came every early. The World Cup came in November and November, December, the players went to the World Cup. By the time they came back, players like uh, Kevin De Bruyne, who also is playing well anyway, had a terrible World Cup um, for Belgium. Bernardo Silva, you couldn't say that the World Cup was good for Portugal as well. But then that excuse will not hold water because Bruno Fernandes is also playing very well for Manchester United. But if you put all these elements together, it does look like rather than a tactical problem, Man City are suffering from players, unhappiness, and you know, football in at this high level is marginal. Uh, a minute too early, you are offside. A minute too late, you miss the bus. So, all of those things are happening in this game. And opposition, not knowing that Man City have a point man whose name is Alan Haaland, what they've learned from the early games where he was scoring the hat-trick back-to-back was that find Haaland and he would score, right? Feed Haaland and he would score. So, what they do is you cannot mark Haaland because Haaland really does not get many touch of the ball. He's the only striker in world football who get lesser touches, who require lesser touches to score the goal. So what they do is, because he's very tall, they make him unstable. So they put him, instead of standing on ground, they put him standing on water. He's unstable, he's not balanced, that's one. Then two, they make sure that they read him in midfield that enables uh, Kevin De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, Gondogan, uh, Rodri to move the ball in quick transition and Put the ball in between the space, the space between the goalkeeper and the hand defender for Alan to meet up with is not available. So they chuck up those space and they make that rhythm bad. So more like when you see somebody playing the violin and another person is playing the harmonica, and then all of a sudden somebody out of nowhere just comes and starts playing something off key, it will disrupt the rhythm of the music. That's exactly what they are doing. 
like I, I, I don't know if you've ever lived in you know those kind of uh, shanty apart area where somebody is playing rhythm and blues somewhere, R and B somewhere, and you're enjoying it, and somebody has just put up one funny reggae music or one funny local music, and then it become a cacophony of distorted noise that you cannot understand. That's exactly what's happening to Man City. Opposition is making it impossible for them to get into that free-flowing, fluid, uh, running rhythm that makes the machine work as a unit. And then some of the players are also, sometimes you see Jack Cancelo is holding onto the ball for too long. Sometimes you see Kevin De Bruyne are caught in between the decision because when he gets the ball, the movement that you expect from a Bernardo Silva normally is no longer there. The Bernardo Silva of two seasons ago, or when uh, Mares is there, that twisting and turning that he normally brings that brings the goal is no longer there. The coiling that comes from Iraim Sterling on the on the left hand side, Grealish doesn't have it. Grealish is more interested in being fouled and complaining and throwing tantrum rather than really going for goal. He doesn't have goals in him like Iraim Sterling and all that. So all of this put together have been the biggest enemy of Pep Guardiola's Man City this season. Uh, for us now, and I need to touch that, uh, we must give credit to Manchester United, Eric Ten Hag for what he's done, how he's managed the situation, kind of like a repeat of what Pep Guardiola did in his early days at uh, Barcelona, kicking out the players that feel like they are God in the dressing room, players that feel like they should be respected, they should be worshipped, but doing it in such a way that uh, it doesn't look like they're the ones that did it. He practically set up uh, Cristiano Ronaldo for that interview and he did it and then the club had to act. Uh, the same way uh, what Sikora Teta did with Mesut Ozil and Aubameyang and you see where Arsenal are. And he's doing exactly the same thing with Manchester United. But for Arsenal, the matches against Tottenham are sport. Manchester United, because Manchester United are in form right now, but I don't know what they will do on the road at uh, the Emirates. Those two matches will be key. So if Arsenal can go to uh, uh, White Hart Lane and get a win tomorrow and then you know subsequently get a win or a draw against Manchester United with the fact that Manchester United have defeated uh, Man City now uh, it makes their stay on the top a good one I think it'll be good but just imagine my Arsenal losing this two straight game losing to Spurs and also losing to Manchester United then it's a different conversation Manchester United definitely will leapfrog Man City and in turn leapfrog Arsenal and be at the top and at that position once they see glory it will be hard as remember it's a, uh, Eric Ten Hag may be a new coach here but he's coming from a place where he's won the league title he understands what it means to win uh, Ateta on the other hand may not have won the league but he's also worked two and a half years with Pep Guardiola when they won the league would he be able to master it what Arsenal does in the January transfer window in terms of bringing in the victory of bringing in uh, Mikhailo Modric and as well as probably bringing in a backup for uh, uh, Thomas Pate and also a centre forward. Let's not forget that all this drama around Mikhailo Modric is still not a centre forward. Uh, a player like Eddie Kete have impressed me even though I'm one of his strongest critics. I never believe he would do this good but in the game against Newcastle you could tell that Arsenal needed an injection of life and when, when Ateta looked at his bench, he realized that even though they are top of the table, they are the leanest squad in the Premier League. And then everybody on the bench was lightweight compared to the people that were starting. And those are the moments that Premiership uh, season had decided. Remember when Arsene Wenger would start the season and look like they are going to win and then they would lose the title to Manchester United by two or four or five points? These are the times that that happens. I just saw that Ateta and Arsenal get it right for the Arsenal fans and for everybody. Let's not forget that Newcastle could sneak in, but I've always said from the beginning that it would take a miracle for Newcastle to make the top four. Unfortunately, Liverpool are just making that job easy. I don't think Tottenham Hotspur will make the top four, even if they beat Arsenal tomorrow. I don't think Tottenham Hotspur will make the top four. They are not a team that anybody should be bothered about. Yes, last season they made the top four, not because they were better, just because Arsenal was horrible. Ten games to the end of the season, Arsenal lost five. All Arsenal needed out of those five that they lost was to win one. It doesn't necessarily mean beating Tottenham Hotspur. They could have beaten Newcastle, they could have beaten Crystal Palace, they could have beaten any other team, Southampton and the rest of them. But they lost all those ones, including the, 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 the one against Tottenham Hotspur. If Arsenal can get their hearts right on this one and keep it running, they might win the title. But for the Arsenal fans, even if Arsenal doesn't win the title, you should understand because you didn't start the season hoping that Arsenal was going to win the title, did you? All you wanted was this team making the top four. Arsenal still don't have the squad depth that teams that win title have. Even the Leicester City of 2016 have a better squad depth compared to this one. I just saw that things go uh, their way and they win it. But then, I will not be surprised. One team that I think might not win the title is Man City. And if there's a team that will win the title ahead of them, 
it looks like it's going to be Manchester United. But if it is not Manchester United, then let us now win it. That's all I've got to say. Let me go back to watching the game. The second half has started. Uh, do have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching my analysis and my talk about football. Please do want to subscribe to this channel. We we'll promise you that a lot about the Nigerian League will be on this channel as we continue. But help us to help our, make our channels grow and uh, subscribe and also talk to people about our channel so that they will come and subscribe as well. Thank you very much. My name once again is Edafi Matthew Sogane. Always work hard to be the best. And like I always say to people around me, be prepared before the bus comes so that when the bus comes, you would have a seat on the bus. Most time, the reason why people fail is because we do not prepare. We do not arm ourselves with skills, talent, ability to do the job. When the job comes, we are not found wanting and they will complain that the country is not good. Have yourself a wonderful day.